The National Forensic Science Service Laboratory is the only forensic laboratory in Belize which is responsible for the analysis of all evidence submitted by law enforcement for investigation and prosecution of criminal offenses. The Forensic Laboratory Unit staff consists of 13 persons and is headed directly by an assistant director. The Forensic Laboratory is made up of qualified and trained staff with a wealth of invaluable experience who uphold principles of objectivity, integrity, and scientific inquiry in the daily execution of their duties. The Assistant Director is Ebony Lyle Nicholas. She is responsible for all the sections of the lab. The staff in this unit is referred to as Forensic Analysts. A Forensic Analyst depending on what section you're in, analyzes evidence brought in from the law enforcement agencies in Belize. Anything that comes in in the form of evidence from a case gets analyzed. To become a forensic analyst, you have to have a background in science. Um, any one of the natural sciences, but even before that, you have to have a passion for the field of forensic science and understand what it entails. It is desired that you have a bachelor's degree in, it, in either one of the natural sciences that is applicable to the area you're wanting to work in. Forensic evidence is an essential component of the criminal justice system and one that is at present underutilized in the courts. A goal of the forensic department is to change this. Forensic science is the application of science to law. The analytical work of the department is guided by what is set out in the laws of Belize, such as the National Forensic Science Service Act, Misuse of Drugs Act, Firearms Act, Motor Vehicles and Road Traffic Act, and Evidence Act, among others. The reports of analysis produced by the different sections of the laboratory are used by either the criminal or civil courts and can be accompanied by the analyst testimony or can stand alone as prima facie evidence. As an analyst on a daily basis, you have to bear in mind as soon as you step into the door that you're about to do something that can affect the general public. So all the work you do is produce for the justice system, whatever you produce is to be used in the justice system. So as soon as you step into the door, you get the mindset that you have to be objective. You cannot be partial in any way. One of the key persons at the laboratory is the exhibit manager who is responsible for receiving items submitted from crime scenes by police or other law enforcement agencies and upon request, releasing these exhibits for use in case file completion further investigation or court proceedings. So he's the, he's the point person when it comes to receiving items of evidence from the police for analysis. After the exhibit manager gets it, then it is passed on to the forensic analyst. The forensic analyst will, get, uh, will do analysis, give the reports back to the exhibit manager, and the exhibit manager then returns it to the police to be taken back to court. There are three technical areas of specialization within the lab. These are the firearm section, also known as ballistics, the chemistry section, and the serology section. The firearm section is tasked with the analysis of all firearms or firearms-related material, which includes ammunition, bullets, cartridge cases, and bulletproof vests. Their capabilities include identification and classification of all the mentioned items, as well as functional testing of firearms, serial number restoration, trigger pull test, double casting, entry of fired components into the integrated ballistic identification system, and microscopic comparison. Additionally, this unit traces firearms through both E-Trace, firearms that have passed through the U.S., and I-Arms, Interpol's lost or stolen firearms database, and also has the ability to make case-to-case -case links through matching fired components to each other, or in more ideal cases, matching firearms to fired components. These can also be displayed using GIS data. All these things additionally assist in providing useful intelligence to the police department and other law enforcement agencies. So we get the gun, we, we, we test fire it in our range, 
and then after we do all the analysis on it, we send it back to police. We do not store um, we do not store guns or firearms here after it's uh, after it's been analyzed. When it comes to sending exhibits to the lab for testing, especially with firearms that are picked up at the scenes, or even the expanded shells that the scenes of crime technician retrieve on the scene, we normally request the assistance of the lab in doing comparisons. Sometimes we might pick up a firearm on the expanded shells and we ask them to compare it to see if they have a match. We also, I know that the police department, every time a firearm is licensed, they fire a weapon and the expanded um, cartridge is kept and is sent to the lab for also for an, um, testing purposes, no? If in case this firearm is used in any shooting, will you have already have a, a sample of it? The chemistry section is divided into two subsections, namely the analytical chemistry section and the toxicology section. The analytical chemistry subsection analyzes drugs of abuse in accordance with what is regulated in the laws of Belize and the toxicology subsection at present does predominantly ethanol concentration analysis in biological matrices, that is blood, urine and vitreous humor, either from living or deceased subjects and also performs urine drug screening. As a part of their duties, the analysts of this section are also required by law to be present at drug destructions in order to scientifically verify the type of drug exhibits being destroyed. The analysts are also often required to work in close collaboration with the law enforcement agencies, including specialized police units and the customs department, to conduct on-site sampling procedures for large seizures of suspected drugs or to swab for the presence of drugs on boats, planes and others. Serology is a section responsible for the analysis of body fluids, which include semen, saliva and blood. The current capabilities of this section include physical analysis of items and testing for the presence of these fluids. After careful analysis and assessment, if the case is determined to have potential for useful DNA evidence, DNA analysis is outsourced to one of the approved reference laboratories abroad. At this time, there is a requirement in place for an analyst to accompany the exhibits abroad in order to hand deliver and receive the exhibits to and from the reference laboratory so as to mitigate against the risk of evidence tampering. So who are considered the clients of the forensic laboratory? The clients of the laboratory include uh, the police department um, and specialized units of the police department which include MIT, which is the mobile interdiction team, the GSU, the um, anti-narcotics unit. Anti-narcotics unit um, have a very close relationship with the chemistry section because they're, like I said, they called out. They are called out to go unseen with anti-narcotics a lot. Um, others, CIB, is one of the main clients of it, of the lab because they are the ones who do all the investigations behind these cases. So CIB from the police department is one of the main clients. There we have the prosecutors from both the DPP office and the police prosecutors at times that are clients of the lab. Um, they can request, request sorry, specific analysis that may or may not have been done or request reanalysis of certain cases for their purposes. There are There is a customs department that we also do analysis for. There's the municipalities which include the city councils, the town councils. For intoxicating liquors, we do analysis for them. There are the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard asks, sometimes the Coast Guard's rules are both. They ask for testing of recruits or testing of their personnel, so urine drug testing. And they also request um, on-site or on-scene visits as well. The prison and the Belize Defense Force are also clients of the laboratory. The laboratory does not do private work, so an individual cannot come make a request for us to do urine drug testing from them on their, on their own. We do not do paternity testing for, um, for clients because we have been requested that before. We do not do any kind of firearms work, any kind of anything from the general public 
it has to come through one of these agencies that I've mentioned. Due to the nature of the job, the employees of the forensic department are at risk of what is called vicarious trauma or reliving the exposure to a traumatic crime scene. The department is looking at ways to ensure the mental health and safety of the staff. We've established a health and safety committee. We've tried to, to look at ways um, to promote the mental well-being, mental health of our staff, um, to try to promote um, not only physical activity um, sessions that would, would reinvigorate them in terms of the work that they do at, at, at retreats, at um, social or planning work retreats, um, designing spaces for recreational activity. Um, in the short term future, we want to try to establish some partnerships with um, organizations or, or, or institutions, private companies that could provide stress relief sessions. We've engaged the Ministry of Health on a couple of occasions from their mental health section to be able to provide some educational and, and some therapeutic sessions for our staff. The future plans of the laboratory include an expansion of the present scopes of analysis in the toxicology, firearms and serology sections. In the serology section, we're looking to expand in terms of identification through DNA analysis. It is not feasible at present for us to, to acquire a DNA lab as quick as possible. So in the interim, we will continue to outsource to reputable labs in the region that can provide reliable results. One of the most important plans that we have in our future is to establish a quality management system so that the work produced by every section in the laboratory is work that is in accordance or up to the standards of the uh, of ISO accreditation. Um, the reason why this is so important is that ISO or accreditation allows for a report that is produced by the area that is accredited to be accepted anywhere in the world. The building that the forensic department is located is about 13 years old and the lab is outgrowing the space. If the new scopes of analysis are to be incorporated and the staff complement is to be increased, there will be a need for more space. The Ministry of National Security for a few years now has been working actively on a, a loan agreement to try to procure a new office space, uh, sorry, a new laboratory space that would also combine that morgue space that I, I, I mentioned earlier and also uh, uh, scenes of crime headquarters. This expansion project is predicted to come to fruition within the next three to five years. It is some waiting, but in the meantime, the department continues to make the most of their resources in serving Belize. One of the guiding principles of the department is to promote changes within the justice system so as to reduce the reliance on eyewitness statements and instead increase the utilization of scientific evidence in order to reduce wrongful convictions and increase the conviction rate, with the ultimate impact of being a safer and juster society.